What's up guys, this is Mr. Eldridge, and in today's video, we are going to look at the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865. Battles in the early phases of the war from 1860 to 1862 favored the armies, specifically of the Confederacy. Due to several missed opportunities by hesitant Northern generals, uh, key leaders such as Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson outmaneuvered Union Army, specifically in Virginia. With the two capitals of Washington, D.C. and Richmond being so close together, the two armies maneuvered mostly around Northern Virginia and Maryland. However, with a Union victory at Antietam in September of 1862, Lincoln was emboldened to attempt a decisive and risky diplomatic maneuver. In an attempt to align the foreign powers of Britain and France against the Confederacy, Lincoln is going to pass the Emancipation Proclamation in September of 1862 that will officially go into effect on January 1st, 1863. This will forbid slavery in enemy territories and allow the Union Army to legally confiscate Southern slaves as enemy property. Now, the war is going to have some major battles. You're going to have the battles on the Eastern Front and the Western Front. The Eastern Front, of course, being from Maryland down to the Carolinas, and the Western Front uh, mostly in Mississippi, Tennessee, down to New Orleans. Major battles of the Civil War include the Battle of Vicksburg, the Battle of Atlanta, Sherman's March to the Sea, to Savannah, of course, we've already mentioned Antietam, there's Bull Run, and the many battles that are going to occur uh, in the state of Virginia, but especially the Battle of Gettysburg in July of 1863. Previously, the Confederacy had sought the recognition and support from the nations of Great Britain and France in upholding its sovereignty. While support was considered, Britain and France wanted to see that the Confederacy could hold its own against the Union. However, with victory achieved at Antietam, Lincoln moved to give the war a moral purpose rather than a political or economic one. By passing the Emancipation Proclamation, Lincoln shifted the focus from a struggle over uh, issues within states and the notion of quote-unquote states' rights to one of abolishing slavery, something that had not been seen as of yet. This diplomatic move, coupled with the victory, uh, ended any chances of the Confederacy receiving foreign support, be it from foreign navies or supplies. And of course, the famous Anaconda Plan was not allowing supplies to get in or out uh, to the Confederacy. Additionally, many former slaves and free blacks joined the Union Army, constituting roughly about 10% of Union soldiers, although blacks were still segregated in separate fighting units. With losses in 1863 at Gettysburg in the east and Vicksburg on the Mississippi River, the Confederacy's hopes for victory quickly dwindled. The victory at Vicksburg in particular, gave the Union control of the Mississippi and effectively cut the South and their supply lines in half. It also allowed for the rise of Ulysses S. Grant as a major general in the war and a major leader for the military effort. Additionally, the Union broke defenses to many key Southern ports in 1863, thus allowing the North to slowly choke the South from supplies. The coup d'etat, if you will, was Sherman's march to the sea. This was the seizing of Atlanta and Savannah in 1864. On this march, Union forces destroyed Southern infrastructure, Southern supplies, and civilian property. General Sherman brought havoc in the Deep South. General Lee was eventually forced to surrender to Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse in 1865. While the war technically continued for a few weeks, the surrender of the Northern Virginia Army under General uh, Lee essentially marked the end of the Civil War. 
The war was devastating to the population and the economy of the South. Union soldiers had destroyed railroad and telegraph lines, as well as destroying Southern industry. The South situation was so dire that the Confederacy had even resorted to the impressment of Confederate citizen food and supplies to continue the war. While the South had plenty of agricultural production, they had no way to transport it. The Union economy, on the other hand, grew extensively with mass industrialization, canal construction, road construction, and the population is going to grow. In fact, Northerners are able to spread west as the Pacific Railroad Acts of 1862 provided Western uh, railways. Additionally, the Homestead Act of 1862 provided large land grants for migrants who could maintain the land itself. <laughs>